Quickly, the Sahara wasn't always a desert. It turned from a tropical region into a desert around 11,000 years ago. Researchers found evidence of a massive river called the Tamarasset that could have sustained a community. This river flowed toward the Rikat structure, aligning with Plato's description. The Trans-Saharan Seaway ran through the Sahara 50 to 100 million years ago. The sea allegedly destroyed Atlantis around 11,500 years ago, likely due to a rapid rise in sea level caused by the end of the Ice Age. NASA's worldview imagery shows patterns consistent with this theory. Those concentric rings might be a key to unlocking the secrets of our planet's evolution over millions of years. They're shaped by erosion on resilient rock layers, creating a spooky pattern of ridges and troughs. The central peak stands proud at 1,300 feet. The central part has undergone a significant erosion makeover, revealing a circular structure with a raised peak. Unlike impact craters, the eye of the Sahara flaunts a striking balance and symmetry. Some say it results from rock uplift, sculpted by wind and water. Others think it's an ancient anticline, eroded to reveal its concentric glory. Then there's a salt diapir theory, suggesting that salt's buoyancy sculpted this beauty. Dating techniques have proved that it formed 541 to 252 million years ago, give or take a million or two. Ancient tools are scattered around the outer rings of the structure near riverbeds. Some older stone tools have also been spotted in the same areas. And still, even though some spear points from the Neolithic period have been found, there aren't many signs that people were living there back then. The area seems to have been used for short-term activities like hunting and making tools. There are other unearthly mysteries that haunt our world. One such enigma is in Norway, the ominous Hestalen light phenomenon, also known as the Valley of Lights, leaves scientists confused. This valley is 10 miles wide. It's quite isolated, but a peculiar blue box sits high on the hillside equipped with cameras scanning the valley. The unsettling saga began in the 1980s, when the night sky over Hestalen erupted with burning fireballs, a recurring spectacle that sent shivers down the spines of those who witnessed it. This wasn't a fleeting occurrence. Rather, it became a regular thing. Terrified locals reported encounters with these unexplained luminous phenomena, some of which happened near their homes. Unease spread like wildfire. At its peak, there were about 20 sightings every week. The phenomenon made its way into newspapers, magazines, and media worldwide. Soon, people flocked to the valley, hoping to see the lights themselves. In 1984, experts joined the fray, armed with sophisticated instruments like magnetometers, radiometers, and other ometers. What they encountered was mind-bending, lights that defied explanation. Some moved at a leisurely pace, while others raced through the sky at an astonishing 19,000 miles per hour. People tried to explain these lights. Airplanes, distant reflections, ball lightning, satellites, planets, meteors. But the speed and how these lights danced ruled out all those theories. We're slowly approaching another mysterious place. This is the greatest subglacial lake among Antarctica's 675 known lakes. It can easily hide unknown life forms. This lake is beneath the East Antarctic ice sheet. Dive about 2.5 miles under the ice, and there you'll see Lake Vashtak, located at 1,600 feet below sea level. This lake is 155 miles long and 31 miles wide at its broadest point. With an average depth of 1,400 feet, it's also the world's sixth largest by volume. It's like an underwater city with lofty pillars and deep basins. The secret lake was discovered in 1993, yet it had been waiting to be found down there for over 2,000 years, collecting ancient secrets. In 2012, scientists drilled through the ice, creating the longest ice core ever. They pierced the ice all the way to the lake surface. The year 2013 brought an unexpected twist when the tranquil waters erupted during the extraction of an ice core, mixing with drilling fluids. Then they got a pristine water sample in 2015. Some believe there might be previously unknown life forms down there, since it's a fossil water reserve that's been untouched for millions of years. They could be a lot like those speculated ice-covered oceans on moons like Europa and Enceladus. 
It all started with a theory in the 19th century, suggesting fresh water lurking under Antarctic ice sheets. Then, in 1955, seismic soundings hinted at a subglacial lake. And by the 90s, satellite data confirmed Lake Vostok's existence. Now, Lake Vostok isn't alone. In 2005, they found an island in the middle of the lake. Then, two smaller lakes joined the party. They suspect that a secret network of subglacial rivers might link these lakes. Now, very far away from Antarctica, in Venezuela, Catatumbo lightning presents a sinister light show at the junction of the Catatumbo River and Lake Maracaibo. This unsettling lightning phenomenon happens at about 140 to 160 nights a year, going on for 10 hours a day, and can flash up to 280 times in a single hour. The frequency of this lightning show changes with the seasons and from year to year. There was a break between January to March in 2010, causing a bit of worry that it might vanish forever. As the sun sets, winds from the east start picking up speed. The strong wind is called a nocturnal low-level jet, like what you see in the Great Plains of North America. These winds bring moisture, mostly from the Caribbean and the lake itself. This humid air hits high mountain ridges, causing thunderstorms to form over the mountains. Thanks to the ongoing wind situation, more thunderstorms appear as the night goes on. This pattern repeats itself, and is why this area has the highest annual lightning rate globally. Have you ever heard the word the strid? It's a variation of the word the stride that is used in Yorkshire. And it refers to a narrow section of the river wharf that's so small you could jump over it. But don't be fooled by its size, it's one of the most dangerous spots around. Even taking a step into the water can have dire consequences. The river wharf has a forceful current, and since the strid is so narrow, it's even stronger in that area. The intense water flow has eroded the limestone around the strid, which created hollow spaces much deeper than the rest of the riverbed. Here's the secret. The current has also weakened the banks of the strid from below. So, the ground you're standing on, admiring the rapid flow, is probably just a fragile ledge hanging over treacherous waters. There's no record of anyone who found themselves in the water of the strid and found their way out of it. And the worst part? You wouldn't even guess that this innocent-looking stream could be such a danger. So, my advice to you, my friend, is to stick to a safer body of water for your aquatic adventures. If you're looking for a weekend getaway in California, Horseshoe Lake is the spot for you. It's got everything. Sandy beaches, hiking trails, and picnic areas, but wait, there's more to it than meets the eye. This lake has a dark side, namely around 100 acres of dead trees that surround it. And it's not just the trees that have been claimed by this lake. The earthquakes that hit in 1989 and 1990 unleashed carbon dioxide from under the hot magma. The gas seeped out into the air, damaging all the life around the lake. Even now, Horseshoe Lake is just as dangerous as it was 30 years ago. What makes it so scary is that the levels of this toxic gas change randomly. Warning signs that are posted everywhere certainly could give a horror film touch to a fun hike in the woods. In Kauai, Hawaii, there's a group of stunning waterfalls that used to be a popular destination for tourists. Kipu Falls, as they're called, were once the go-to spot for swimming and diving. To get to them, you had to take a long walk along a dirt path until you finally arrived at a breathtaking view of a 20-foot waterfall pouring into a crystal-clear pool below. But since 2011, this area has been off-limits to the public. Why, you ask? Well, there have been a lot of accidents at Kipu Falls. Obviously, jumping off the top of the waterfall would be an obvious reason for that. But in addition, there were much more mysterious cases. Witnesses tell tales of swimmers peacefully enjoying the pool at the bottom of the falls, only to be suddenly dragged under the surface. No definite explanation was found to these accidents. The locals believe that the water spirit Mo'o is to blame because it doesn't appreciate being disturbed by loud tourists. There's also a theory of a powerful whirlpool at the bottom of the pool. In any case, guide publishers do not mention Kipu Falls anymore, and trespassing is severely punished. The Samizan Hole, located in the Gulf of Thailand, is the ultimate spot for thrill-seeking divers, 
but it's also the most dangerous one. With a drop of 280 feet, it's the deepest diving site in the region. But its depth is not the only reason it is considered a place to avoid. The area is a major shipping zone for giant oil tankers. The strong currents around the hole make diving even more treacherous. And if that's not enough, the Samisan Hole is also home to deadly barracudas that could easily attack unsuspecting divers. The water is so murky that visibility is nearly zero, making it challenging to spot these aggressive sea creatures. All in all, the Samisan Hole is a breathtaking but extremely hazardous spot that should only be explored by experienced divers with nerves of steel. Let me tell you about New Smyrna Beach, the shark attack capital of the world. If you're looking for a relaxing vacation spot in Volusia County, Florida, you may want to reconsider this beach. The waters around New Smyrna Beach are teeming with fish, which attracts a lot of sharks. In fact, there have been so many shark attacks reported in this area that it's earned the title of the shark attack capital of the world. Even scientists have warned that if you go for a swim there, you're bound to get up close and personal with at least one of these creatures. We are talking about a distance of 10 feet, and in many cases you wouldn't even notice it. To make matters worse, the bull shark, one of the most dangerous and aggressive types of sharks, has been spotted in these waters. Once again, Kauai is on our list. The beach on Nepali coast called Hanakapiai Beach might look like heaven on earth, but don't be fooled. To get there, you have to trek through a super steep, rocky two-mile trail. There are no lifeguards on this remote beach, so even if you decide to take a dip in the water, you're on your own. The biggest threat to your safety is the incredibly strong rip currents. They are almost always present because there are no reefs to shield the shore. And if someone gets caught in one, there's no safe place to swim to for miles. The nearest safe beach is six miles away. Trust me, this beach doesn't have the best track record in terms of safety. So it's highly advised that you stay out of the water if you end up at this beach. Picture a ghost town. Abandoned buildings covered in graffiti, rusting remains of cars, cracks in the roads. And now add to that a thick blanket of black smoke coming from under the ground. And the ground itself is hot to the touch. You're entering Centralia, Pennsylvania. Centralia used to be a lively place during the 1800s and up to the 1960s. Its rich coal mines attracted a lot of people to work and live there. But in 1962, one of those mines accidentally caught fire, which started to spread underground. Coal is a slowly burning fuel, so the citizens continued to live peacefully for almost another two decades until the fire began to undermine the town. One of the worst accidents was when a giant sinkhole appeared out of nowhere in the backyard of a house in Centralia. Luckily, no one was hurt, but after that, people started leaving the place. In the following 30 years, almost everyone moved out, though not all. As of 2020, five people still live there. But other than that, Centralia is by all means a ghost town, and crumbling abandoned buildings and cracked roads are just a minor part of it. The most disturbing thing about this place is the smoke billowing from under the ground through cracks. The fires down below are still raging, heating up the surface and slowly destroying the remains of the town. In fact, this was what inspired the famous fictional town of Silent Hill. The blaze is estimated to last for another 250 years, and by that time, there will be nothing but scorched wasteland in the area. If you're afraid of bugs, then this place will probably be your worst nightmare. The Gomantong Caves in Malaysia could be one of the most picturesque places in the world, if not for their dwellers. First off, there are bats. Over 2 million of these animals live in the vast expanses of the caves. They're easily scared, but I guess you don't want that. Millions of winged horrors flying at you in a panic aren't to be taken lightly. Secondly, there are cockroaches. And while the number of bats is more or less determined, the roaches swarming the floors and walls of the caves are unaccountable. There are so many of them that you won't be able to make a single step without a dozen of these creepers crawling up your legs. And finally, if you manage not to scream from the cockroaches and wake up hordes of bats, you might be rewarded with other wonderful dwellers of the caves. 
Those include snakes, scorpions, and giant venomous centipedes. Charming. Still, the caves are open to the public, and there are lots of people who visit this place. Right in the middle of nowhere, in the empty wastelands of the Karakum Desert in Central Asia, there's a great hole in the ground that burns forever. It's called the Darvaza Gas Crater, and it's an actual pit, broad and deep, that has been ablaze for over half a century now. The locals call it the gate to the underworld, and the view is indeed frightening. There is no way to extinguish the flames, and scientists believe the crater will keep burning for centuries on end. The pit apparently appeared in 1971, when a group of engineers scouted the area and thought they stumbled upon an oil deposit. It turned out to be a natural gas pocket, though. And when the drilling rig started working on the site, the ground collapsed. The engineers were afraid that the poisonous gas might put nearby towns in danger, so they thought it best to set it on fire and let it burn out in a few weeks. But as we can see, the blaze is still going strong. The crater has since become a popular tourist attraction, but despite that, it still poses some danger, so efforts are being made to finally extinguish the gates of the underworld. Imagine seeing an insanely venomous snake right next to your foot. Terrifying enough, huh? And now, multiply that experience by a couple thousand times, when no matter where you try to run, there are similar snakes all around. That's Snake Island for you, and the name couldn't describe it better. The island is located not far from the coast of Brazil, and is home to thousands of golden lancehead vipers. About 11,000 years ago, the sea levels rose and separated the island from the mainland, and lots of lancehead vipers became trapped on it. Their mainland siblings are venomous as well, but not as much. The golden variety had to evolve to survive, and oh, they did. Since there's not so many land animals for the vipers to hunt, they adapted to hunting birds instead. And for their venom to be effective, it had to be instant. So, golden lanceheads developed a venom that is five times more potent than the regular variety. This helped the snakes thrive, and now there are one to five vipers per square meter of the island. It is considered so dangerous that Brazil banned all visitors, like someone would really want to go there. Lost in the woods at night, you suddenly stumble upon a human figure. Relieved, you touch their shoulder to ask for directions, but it's hard as stone and covered in moss. And then you look into the face of the person and your mouth opens in horror. It's anything but human. My advice would be not to wander around Southeast Finland at night if you don't want a shocking experience because it's here that a renowned Finnish sculptor made his eerie sculpture garden in his own backyard. The garden's main exhibition consists of 200 human figures in various yoga poses. But as you walk around, you may come across more sinister-looking works. Such as cloaked figures with its arms stretched forward and deep black gaps for eyes. Adding to the creepiness are real human teeth in the mouths of some statues. The garden itself appeared because the sculptor was a recluse and didn't want to leave his home. And when asked to lend some of his sculptures to museums, he would say he needed to ask them if they wanted to. It seems they never did, though. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.